Hot Springs Resort. I was able to take some nice, good, long soaks the night before the winds hit, and then I was able to utilize the private soaking tubs several times over the last couple of days. I was able to dump my tanks and get water. I do have a water pipe busted underneath my RV, and so I had to resort to filling up my five-gallon water jugs, of which I have three. Well, actually, two are six-gallon, one is five-gallon. And I'm going to use them until I can get my water pipe replaced or repaired down in Baja. It is Tuesday, February 4th, and I am headed out to, it's a casino that's close to where I am crossing the border tomorrow. My cousin is meeting me at the border crossing for Tecate, and we are going to cross together. She's going to take the bus up and then cross over with me. So come along for the ride. It is Wednesday morning. I am headed out to meet my cousin at the border of the United States and Mexico in Tecate. She is coming up from where she lives in Valle de Guadalupe, and we are going to cross the border together. So I won't have to do that by myself for the first time. I'm so excited. This has been a long time coming with all the problems with Howie. I was supposed to be down there in November and then December and then January. Now here it is February and I am finally getting to go. I'm so thrilled. I'm going to take you all along with me for the ride. Jack and Juno are all in their little spots, comfortable, covered up because it's cold this morning. It was 22 when I got up this morning and I couldn't believe it. Of course, I'm in the mountains in Southern California, so I guess that's to be expected. Anyway, come along for the ride. It should be an interesting trip. Peace. See you on the other side. Okay, I'm just pulling out of the casino, and away we go through the mountains. Kind of exciting. Well, I should have cleaned my windshield, darn it. Forgot to do that.
Hi, everyone. I am in Tecate on the United States side, and I am waiting for my cousin. She is taking a bus from where she lives up to Tecate. She will cross over into the United States, meet me here in this parking lot, and then ride with me to cross over into Mexico. So, hee <laughs> I'm almost there. I can see it from here. Stay tuned. Peace. We are getting ready to cross the border. I'm wondering if they're going to mess with me about the video camera going through the checkpoint. You're not supposed to film. But they may not see it. Right. They may not realize what it is. And most everyone these days, oh, and we go into Tecate, you're going to do a three-second stop at every stop sign. Okay. Three seconds. Go to the right here? Uh, I don't have to follow straight. Okay. okay. We're just looking for green, green, Why green, three green. seconds? Just make sure you stop. Yes, no rolling stops. Exactly. Well, I don't ever do rolling stops. This Ticate so. is the worst. <laughs> See, this is the parking lot I was thinking of. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, the pay less. They have papela shoes here. Yeah, but they all just went out they of business. They all just went out of business. Yeah. I was going to say, oh, they just haven't taken the signs yeah. down. Take off the sunglasses. So it just goes straight through uh, like this. Does auto mean stop? Yes. Avance. And what do I do here? Move. 
Move. Move. So we got secondary. They came in and searched the RV. nervous at all they didn't even ask for my passport yeah no they don't care they don't i asked her do you need my passport she said no they don't care about any of that they just wanted to make sure i wasn't bringing shit in but mm -hmm. they didn't even look no, like, she, like they barely the the other thing they like to get people for here is they say oh you need to see the person in the crosswalk and everybody's like, no, there was no one in the crosswalk. We are in Tecate, Mexico. And there is a McDonald's here. And that's kind of weird. <laughs> In Valle de Guadalupe, where we are, the um, first, one of the first settlers there were Russians. Um, the ba Mexican government gave uh, 200, it was 100 families, visas to come escaping Tsar Russia in oh. early 1900s. Wow. And so you will see red-headed, blue-eyed Mexicans in the valley. Oh, Wow. Red-headed Mexicans going, oh, are you Rusko? <laughs> they love Russia here. This just looks like any Southwest American yeah. town. Yeah. Like Yuma or the stop signs are hard to see. Though. Yeah, they are. And they're sh my mom's like, they're, they're so short. short. Yeah, they are. They're short. Real loud. They're little tiny. Mm -hmm. Ours are like massive. Yeah. Mejora Vialidades de Tejuana, Rosarita y Picate. I have no idea what that says. Vialidades. Mejor is better. Via is way. A better way. They have a new a highway that cuts over to... Oh, uh, so better way to Tijuana. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Or do you like having your little leg on the door rest? She just likes being in your lap. Aww. Aww. I should have forgot to put my seatbelt back on. Do they have seatbelt laws here? No. I don't well, I never wear it. They might. But I mean, it just kills me. You see people driving with a baby in their lap. Oh, yeah. Baby in the front seat. Baby in the driver's lap. Uh, that was how it was in America when we were kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is true. Um, and this is kind of weird. I looked up what the biggest cause of death in children is in the United States. Being left in a car, hot car? <laughs> and what the biggest cause of death in children in Mexico is. Yeah. Um, because, you know, little bitty kids go to the store by themselves. You can ask any six-year-old what anything costs, and they can tell you. What does bread cost? What does a Coke, a 32 ounce Coke cost? What does an ice cream at the ice cream place cost? They know. Because they go to the store to get stuff by themselves. You can ask a 10 year old what anything in the grocery store costs. He can tell you. Wow. Because they go get it. And 
and they, they have an auto zone here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what was the biggest in the United States where we have all the safety rules and seat belts right. and accidents? Oh my gosh. And in the in Mexico, disease. Wow. And we have all the safety rules in the United States yeah. and the kids still get hurt. And here they have no safety. No car seats, no special cribs. Nothing. This is so weird. I'm in Mexico. <laughs> I know. Oh, gosh. I'm actually driving in Mexico. Right. I've been in the border towns before, but oh, I did drive into Algodonas one time, mm. but I only drove right across the border. And the guy, I was going to the pharmacia, and the guy said, he saw this, and he said, Oh, you park right here. I watch your car. Uh, you go to Purple Store? I'm like, Yes. You go to Purple Store? Right? I saw your video. Yeah. The purple store. Oh was, my god! I think, I, it's they have everything. Go get your glasses. Go get your this. Yes. Get your that all right there. So, do you know how fast I can go on this road? Um, I want to say it's 60 kilometers right now. Okay, so that's like 40, almost 40 miles an hour. Shit, okay, we got a speed limit sign coming up. 60. Oh, that's what they look like? Yeah. Yeah, the round. And okay. then if you have people behind you or you're going slower than traffic, you go into the... This part of the road. Yeah, I'm too wide for that. And then just be careful because sometimes other slower people will be in that part of the road. Yeah. So, so there's a guy is. riding my ass, yeah. even though I'm going the speed limit. He looks like he's going to try to pass me on the inside. Kirby Road, motherfucker. Yeah. And you want to hug this side because you'll have 18 more to try to come over the line at you. It's one of the biggest dangers in, uh, on the highways. That and driving at night with black cows. Black cows? You know, why don't we drive at night in Baja? The rule is because you can't see black cows on the highway at night. So let's see if he'll go past me now. Nope. Okay. <laughs> He got over in this side, too. All right. Whatever. So, even with headlights, you can't see black cows? Uh, they'll lay perpendicular in the road. They lay in the road? Yeah. Because there's parts on this highway that's no fencing. It's open range. Wow. Yeah. 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 We have a friend, uh, kind of an acquaintance. He... He did it not once, but twice. And he's lucky he walked away both times. Very lucky. Wow. Took out the whole front end. Wow. Uh, what is Oxo? Um, like 7-Eleven. Okay.
Mexico. Uh-huh. Do not, okay, so a bribe is called a multa. Multa? Uh-huh, multa. Maybe you okay. LTA. Do multa. not pay the multa. There's a phone number you can call, right? Oh, seven, eight, I think it's it. I'll have to look for you. Um, but if they ever say, well, right, you did this wrong, you ran that stop sign, um, okay, we go to the station, the delegation, or the station. They know those two words. The delegation. Delegation? Uh-huh. Or the station. Uh-huh. And we go see the judge and I pay. I'm not going to pay you. I'm not going to give you. Or it doesn't matter how much money I have on me. If they go, well, how much money do you have? No, vamos. Para the delegation. Or for the judge. And what you do is you go in front of the judge and you pay the ticket. 99% of the time, they're going to take you around the block and go and wave you on. Because they, they don't want to do anything right. wrong. Exactly. And they yeah. just want to get a multa out. Exactly. And then the stupid people complain, oh, it was a Ticati and I didn't want to go to the delegation because it would have taken two or three hours. And so I just paid the multa. And it's like, well, you fucked everybody again. Yeah. Because as long as we keep paying, they're going to keep doing it. Keep doing it. <laughs> and so you've got to hold your ground and say no. Didn't want to be around them. Uh, I don't know what the 
the rift was, but it had something to do with the fact that when her mother died, Grandma Schmidt Smith died, that something happened. Like treasured family heirlooms were mishandled, something like that. <coughs> and were, were they abusive? Were they custodians? Yes. Um, so Ma's family was some of the original settlers with Sam Houston. Okay. Of Houston. Right, right. So way back, I think it was her paternal family. Uh-huh. So, you know, back in the whatever, right. 1800s, whatever, when they formed and settled Houston, her father's family was part of that. says Alto uh-huh. on the road, but it doesn't have a stop sign. So it is a stop. And anybody coming off this highway has the right of way. Okay. They do not stop anywhere. Yeah. This is our biggest farmacia. Okay. This is our local gas station in town. So how much is it average? It, like, oh, I have to ask here. I want to say like 38 pesos a liter. Okay. There's barbershops right here. Barberia? There, uh huh, and then you'll see. I showed you that a friend of ours. Oh, yeah, they had, drove by the original barbershop. And had oh, taken a picture. Crazy yeah. Is that? Oh, and she's down gosh. here. She's in uh, Punta Banda. Oh, she is. With the Banda. Oh, that's close. Punta Banda. It's close to where we buy flowers. So this is the Mercado. Uh huh. And here's the flower shop. Just right there. Yours? Uh huh. Oh, how cool. So that's the original barbershop. Okay. And it's a Segunda second hand next to it. It's this is so, this is your little tree. town. Uh-huh. Uh, one stop. At, on the weekends, we've seen the guys on horses come through. It's closed today, but this is the miscellanea. They have everything in there. It's like um, a, like a five and dime. Okay. Yeah. They've got clothes, kitchen stuff, hardware stuff. Oh, cool. I mean, it's truly like a five and dime. This is the... Granero, like the feed store. Okay. And the paper store. Paper store? Uh, papelaria. So, at the paper store here, you can get, we're going to make a ride at the stop sign. Okay. This is our little Cafe Laura, where we like to get cheap breakfast, 60 pesos for, for breakfast. breakfast. Um, and we're going to make a ride. Okay, I'm going to let them go. You go. You go. Go. Because it's a tight turn. Um, is this a school? A school? A school? This is the one of the elementary schools. It's funny. Uh, see that fancy white truck? That's uh-huh. PJJE. It's the. Um, they're like the only detectives in Mexico. Okay. Yeah. If you ever get robbed or there's a murder. Go to PJJ. If you don't go to the police, you go to the detectives. Okay. <laughs> they have an office. Yeah, one of the elementary schools, they um, they let the kids have any haircut they want, basically. 
Oh, cool. But the other elementary school is very strict. Like, they don't let them have the line. The kids oh, have to yeah. have that line. Uh-huh. They can't have the line. They can't have any, like, zigzags or scars. Or, and it's funny. Fair knows, like, what school the kids go to. So he knows what kind yeah. of haircut to give them. And sometimes they'll be like, oh, I want this. And he goes, I don't think you don't you go to so-and-so's school? Or then the mom will come in and he goes, is he allowed? No, no, no. He's not allowed to have that. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to say make a right here. We could go up to the next street, but this is pumpkin matter. Bomb. And this is the policia? Uh-huh. This is the delegation. They walk around and talk to families about inoculations for kids. Vaccinations. Uh, vaccinations. Yeah, the health department walks around. Have you guys had any scare? And left here. On the other uh, side. On the other side, okay. So this part of, this is like the old neighborhood for town here. Okay. So this is like the promenade. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, we have a promenade. Oh, internet cafe? This one's still working. There's one in town, though. Perro. Basic it all. I see the perros. Okay. That looks like houses in San Antonio right there in the barrio. Um, okay, so... Do you, have you guys had any problems with the, the coronavirus in Mexico yet? No, you know, Mexicali has a huge Chinese population. Yeah, I know they population. do. I know uh, they do. Okay. And these stop signs you don't have to worry about. Yeah, I still do. Yeah. Because I'm a slow mover. And I don't want to be like in the middle of the intersection and have somebody come plowing through. This road was a freaking river when it rains. It was so bad. I'm so glad they graded it. It still gets kind of bad up here. But... Uh, this is nothing. Oh, this is nothing compared to what I'm used to. Mom I just have to go really slow. I can't do any bumps anymore. She's in extreme pain in her neck. So she could she could only go up to the house once. We had her stay in a hotel in town. And she was in pain after coming up these bumps. Wow. Yeah. Let me just take them slow. I like this poor little doggy. He doesn't even have a house. He has to live outside to get it. With an RV, everything. Right. <laughs> and I have things buckled down as much as I can, but most of my cabinet doors are missing. So everything just flies around. I'm just used to it. So there's a damn dog that keeps bringing trash here. It's pissing me off. I thought it was in we're going to go in here. Right here? Oh, it's your thing catered here. Uh-huh. Right here? Yep. Okay, this is going to be tight. Oh, my goodness. Oh, where are we going? Oh, my goodness. Got it. For now, I would say, like, we can put you here. Or we can put you where the cars are. Okay, I'll just pull over right here. I, oh, that's the tree. Come straight. 